Hey folks, it's John with KGTropicals.com, bringing you another episode of Tank Talk Q&A. We're answering your questions sent in to us one of two different ways. One, you can email us at that address right there, and we'll answer your questions that way. Or, if you want to have a little more fun with this, you can give our voicemail line a call at this number, leave your question on a voicemail, which I will then play on this series, and you can actually be a part of the show. It's a lot more fun doing it that way. Either way you go, you can still get your questions answered on this series. So today, we've got three voicemails and two emails that we're going to be covering for you. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to start off with this one right here. It is a question on beginner's cichlids. I got to put my headphones up to my ear so that I can hear the guy. Hey, John. It's Herb Sitch. Herb Jack from New York. Um, I wanted to ask you, could you talk about in the KG Q&A um, about beginner cichlids uh, for Africans with the peacock hat and Mbuna's mixing, and could you get in depth a little bit on Mbuna's? Thank you. All right, this is a good question, and my answer for you is probably going to be a little bit different than what you're expecting, because you're thinking that I'm going to tell you to specific names of specific types of fish that you could buy because they're easier for the beginner, and that's not what I'm going to do. Because here is my thoughts on this. I believe that you do need to be at a certain level in the fish keeping hobby to be able to keep Africans. They're not a beginner's fish. But if you are, you don't have to be an advanced hobbyist, but if you know what you're doing, if you understand water chemistry and you understand how to keep a healthy aquarium, you can keep Africans just fine. And what I would tell you is there's no specific fish that you should shoot for what I would tell you to do is go strictly for price. Because here's the thing. You might be the advanced fish keeper who understands water chemistry, and that is all simple to you. What's not going to be simple to you is the attitude of African cichlids and the way they are, they are aggressive and the way that they're territorial. And that's something that you're going to either learn from your friend's experience or you're going to have to learn by your own experience. And so if you're going to learn how to keep these fish together and have them live in harmony, it's probably best to do that without spending a fortune. These fish can be anywhere, African cichlids can be anywhere from $8.99 a piece all the way up to $99 a piece. And so if you're just starting out with African cichlids and you said, you know what, I'm going to go all in. I've got a 150-gallon tank and I'm going to go out and buy 25 big adult male peacocks and haps. You're going to spend a small fortune. I would be your best friend if you did that. But you're going to spend a small fortune. So that's probably not something that I would advise you to do. As much as I would love to take your money, I would hate to be sending these fish, as expensive as they are, off to an experiment. You follow what I'm saying? If you're going to understand the flow of these fish and understand how they interact and understand their territorial nature, it's probably better if you do that by spending a little bit of money rather than a fortune. Do whatever you want to do. If you're going to spend a lot, please call me. But I would recommend staying with the fish that are less expensive. And in almost every fish store I've ever been in, including mine, the fish that are going to be the cheapest when it comes to African cichlids are in Buna's because just about everybody, including me, sells Mbunas strictly as unsexed or juvenile unsexed peacocks and haps. I don't care what type you get. I'm not one of these people that's going to say one is more mean than the other. I know there's stories out there, but I don't buy it. For every single story that there is out there that Demace and I are the meanest fish in the world, you also have the same amount of people that say, never had a problem with Demace and I. So I don't really buy that. Get what you like, but do it and spend less money. This way you can learn how these fish act and learn how to keep these fish. If you already know how to keep the water, learn how to keep the fish and do it without spending a fortune. You'll thank me in the end. And then once you know and you have it all figured out and you understand how these fish operate, then you can call me and then you can spend a fortune. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, this next question is actually perfect for the question that we just got. Um, the, the name of this person that emailed this question in, um, is VGHH, GGHH. 
I, I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. But the question is, how come when I put my African fish together, the fish will fight? This is something that we could do an entire video on. It's a very quick to the point question. I like that. Um, this is something that is probably not the best question for a quick format Q&A series like this. But in a nutshell, what I will tell you is African cichlids are very territorial fish. They fight for a couple of different reasons. One is they fight over territory. They claim a spot. And anybody else that comes in and tries to take that spot from them, they will fight to the death to keep it. Another thing that they fight over is girls. If you got girls in the tank, if you got female African cichlids in there, the boys are going to fight over the girls, just like we do. So that's pretty much common sense there. The other thing is dominance. The males are going to, every single male in that tank is going to want to be the alpha male in the tank. But there can only be one. And so they're always going to be jockeying for that position, the position on top of the chain in the tank. And so those are the reasons why they're going to fight. This is why you see me with an all-male tank. This is why you see me with tanks with a lack of decor. Now, this tank is a little extreme. I'm going to put the decorations in here. This is just a start. Uh, it's not going to be empty forever. But I like to decorate very minimalistic when it comes to my African cichlid tanks because I don't want to give them a bunch of territories to fight over. I like to let the fish be the decoration and not all of the rocks and the fancy decor. Not that I have anything against heavily decorated tanks. I love them. But this is just my preference. It's what I do. So fighting over territory, fighting over girls, another problem I don't have in here because they're all males, and fighting over dominance. Now, there's not a whole lot you can do to curb that. I mean, there's going to be a male in every single tank. I could point to you, the one that is in here, who kind of takes over that position. And if everybody below him falls in line, there's going to be peace. But if you get another one who decides that he wants to take that spot in the pecking order, you're going to have a fight on your hands. So those are the primary reasons why these fish fight. I hope that helps you. I don't know what your name is, but I hope that this helps. Okay, so our next question comes in from the voicemail line, so let's have a listen. Hey, Tom, this is Tony from Nashville. Um, I've had cichlids in a relatively small aquarium in the past, and I have had uh, more community-oriented fish in the past. The cichlids did wonderfully, uh, and I never really understood why, and the community fish never did anywhere near as good. Um, and the only factor that I have come up with is that my water has a very high calcium content in the Nashville area. Um, I'm just curious if that is something that, you know, cichlids are better with and that community fish, you know, little zebras and neons and whatnot are just not as good with or, you know, what, what else might I have been missing? Uh, I had the full test kit for ammonia and nitrates and nitrites and all that. I use good water conditioner, but I cannot seem to have a very successful tank with community fish, and the only thing I can come up with is calcium content. Uh, if you have any thoughts or opinions, I would love to hear them. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank you, Tony. Yes, you do know I have my thoughts and opinions. Uh, and my first thought is you have answered your question already. Uh, when you say that you've had success keeping cichlids, I'm assuming that you're talking about African cichlids. And I'm assuming that because you say your water there in Nashville has a high calcium content. I know that African cichlids appreciate a harder water and more alkaline water with a higher pH, where your South and Central American cichlids like it the opposite side of the spectrum. So I'm assuming that you, when you say you've had success keeping cichlids, that you're talking about African cichlids. So... Yes, I, I would definitely say that that's been your reason why they've been okay and the community fish have not. Community fish, as well as South and Central American cichlids, even things like angels and discus and stuff like that, which are cichlids, they do like a softer water, a more acidic water, a lower pH. Uh, they like it much softer than your Africans do. So if your water coming out of the tap is very hard, very alkaline, uh, that would explain why you're having a difficult time keeping your community fish. And so the the answer to your question is going to be, how do we get that to come back down? And we'll talk about that in a second. There's been a lot of people out there, and I, I guess I'm on the 
the same side of the argument. I, I don't know. There's a lot of people out there that say that these tank-raised fish that have been raised after generation after generation after generation in tanks rather than in nature have adapted heavily to the water conditions of our city water. I think there's some truth to that, especially when you're talking about discus and angels. But I like to, when I'm setting up an aquarium, I like to give the fish what they would have expected had they ever been in nature. And so when I set up my African cichlid tank, I want it to be very alkaline, a higher pH, and I want to do what's necessary to accomplish that. The opposite is true for community fish and South and Central, South and Central American cichlids. So how are we going to do that? There's a few different ways. Some people would argue chemicals are the way to do it. I'm not a person that's against chemicals, but I think that there's easier ways that look prettier. Things like peat moss and driftwood are great ways of bringing the pH down, lo uh, lowering the acidity, bringing it more to the acidic side, uh, and making it a much softer uh, parameter for the fish. And I think that they'll be a lot happier that way. Another way, which is very simple and you wouldn't have to change a thing in your tank, is to use RO water, reverse osmosis. It's a special filtration system. You may already have one in your house. That is something that removes a lot of the mineral content from the water and makes it much softer for the fish. So it's not for the fish, it's for us, but it makes it much more suitable for fish that like more acidic water. So that's another way. Now, if you don't have one of those systems, you can buy RO water from some pet stores. I know there's a pet store two and a half hours away from me that has this gigantic reverse osmosis system and they sell it for like 50 cents a gallon. I, I don't know. But a system to actually filter water with a reverse osmosis system, you can buy them. They mount underneath your sink at Home Depot. They're like 180 bucks. I mean, it's a lot of money, but it is a way of completely removing everything and, and having it be a nice soft water to put directly into your tank without any chemicals or, or anything like that. I used to do that when I kept stingrays. I still have the system. Uh, it's a great way to do it, but all it's all in your budget. If you can't afford a system like that, maybe put some peat moss in there, some driftwood, and that'll definitely bring it down. And also look at the decor that you have in your tank already. You might already, you might have things like lace rock and lava rock that raise the hardness and raise the pH of your water. Get that stuff out of there because all you're doing is making the problem worse. So, yes, Tony, you asked a question and answered it at the same time. You're more of a genius than you even knew. You answered your own question. It is definitely the calcium content. So either soften the water and restart your community fish or just keep Africans. They're the best anyway. All right, so I got a kick out of this next question. It came in to kgqna at gmail.com. It's from Callie White, and Callie says, you totally, all caps, don't need to air this on a Q&A video if you don't want to because it's a small question, but I wanted to know what is the best fish to house with a red empress? Thanks so much for reading, Callie. Callie, I don't shy away from any questions. It doesn't matter how simple they are or how complex they are. So definitely getting to you today. Uh, the best fish, the best type of fish to keep with red empresses is going to be other haplochromans. Things like Venustus, things like Taiwan reefs. The Red Empress is a protomallus, so if you want to go with what the textbook says, they would probably go best with other protomallus. I don't believe that. I think if it's a hap, it can be kept with a hap or an imbuna or a peacock. You know that's the way I am. So a this is what you need to know. A Red Empress is an African cichlid from Lake Malawi, and it is my philosophy. You You want my answer here. My opinion is, you can put that red empress with any fish that's also from Lake Malawi. Okay, so our last question today comes in from the voicemail line again. Let me get my headphones up here and let's have a listen. Hi, John. This is Tony, and I live in South Carolina. Enjoy what you're doing, and yay, go for it, man. Um, by the way, tell Lisa happy birthday. And my question is, when you're changing your water from your faucet through the hose, do you get the faucet water about 78 degrees or whatever that your tank is as close as you can before you put clean water back in? I've always done mine through the milk jug method, so 
Just interested in what you got to say. Thanks. All right, another Tony. Didn't realize I was going to have two Tonys on the show today. Thank you so much for that, and I will send your birthday wishes over to Lisa. This is a pretty simple question. Uh, you asked me what I do. I do not worry about the temperature, only because in my shop I have like a 25-gallon water heater, and so it runs out pretty quick. And so we end up putting in cold water into the tanks. It certainly does not hurt the fish. Um, the water that's in the tanks is, is a good 80 degrees already. And if you're changing 30 or 40 percent of it, it's not going to affect the water too terribly bad. Um, so we don't do that. And I certainly don't have enough milk jugs or water tanks to hold enough water. Uh, not yet anyway, that I could supply the tanks with, with fresh water from there. So I don't have the ability to do that, but that's me. If you want to know how it should be done, I would say, yeah. I mean, if you're doing the milk jug method right now, which I'm assuming what you mean by that is you're filling up these buckets and you're leaving them overnight or a couple days or whatever it is to get to the same temperature as your, at least your room temperature before you put it in the tank. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Um, me personally and in, in my own house, I don't even do that there with this tank. I, it's straight from the sink. I mean, and I just get the water to where it's a reasonable temperature. It's not hot. It's not cold. And I fill this one up. We have one tank in this house, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you have multiple tanks, that can be kind of a challenge. But doing it with the milk jug method or if you have some type of water storage unit that you can use to, to heat it up and put it in your tank at the exact same temperature that it that your tank already is, bravo to you, my friend. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with also putting water in that is a little bit cooler. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, here's the thing. This is something you need to be aware of. You didn't tell me what kind of fish you keep, and that's okay because I don't ask you what kind of fish you keep. If you're an African cichlid keeper, and if you keep males and females together, you need to know that putting cold water in, you do a water change and introducing very cold water into it, that might induce spawning. It simulates rain because in nature, Lake Malawi, when it rains, cools off. And that is something that induces spawning. So if you don't want a bunch of babies in the tank. You want to, you might want to make sure that that water is a good temperature before you put it in there. But there really is, in my opinion, no right or wrong way to do it. But if you're, if the way you're doing it right now works by storing the water, getting it up to temperature before you put it in, go for it. That's perfect. That's perfectly fine. And it will not hurt a thing. All right, so this episode was a ton of fun. I'm really enjoying the new format with the emails and the voicemails and all of that. It's a really good time. I want to thank Dirk, Tony, Tony, Callie, and VGHH. I want to thank you for sending in your questions today. They were a lot of fun. I hope my, my answers helped you out. Um, hey, folks, while you're on the computer, why don't you go over, do me a favor, check out www.kgtropicals.com. We are getting new shipments in every single week, and we're always running specials. So go on there, take a look at that, and we will send you some fish right out to your door. I'm enjoying this series. I hope you are too. Thank you all so much. And oh, by the way, don't forget, I do a podcast version of this video that I upload every single Thursday. It's available on kgtropicals.com. It's also in iTunes. It's on Stitcher Radio, all of the other podcast services. It's called Tank Talk. So check it out. Uploads on Thursdays. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. See you next time.